G'day, my name is Greg, I'm a dog trainer and a volunteer obedience instructor in New South Wales, Australia. Two questions have prompted me to make this video on dog harnesses. Firstly, I see so many times that dog trainers tell us that harnesses are no good for leash behaviour training because they teach a dog to pull. Their theory is, apparently, that is what harnesses are designed for, pulling like a husky mushing a sled. Secondly, my students ask me, are they allowed to use a dog harness to train their dog rather than a collar? Before addressing these matters, let me just acknowledge that there are very many different types of harnesses on the market. Lots of designs that are meant to allow your dog to walk on leash without a collar restraining the neck. Some have rear leash connection and others front connection and still others which have a specific purpose in dog training. I'll speak generally to this broad spectrum of harnesses, but I'll illustrate the points with a few of the specific designs which are used uh, as appropriate tools to facilitate different training outcomes, not to teach the dog an action per se, because the defining harness principle is the same. The handler teaches the dog what is required, not the harness. So back to the two questions. The first question, I do not believe that any piece of dog equipment can teach a dog anything at all. In fact, I find the proposition that a harness teaches a dog to pull quite ridiculous. We, the dog owners, handlers, trainers, teach the dog what to do and how to teach, how to react sorry, to commands and potentially what's required of them when fitted with a particular piece of equipment, whether it's a harness, a special collar or whatever. For example, you cannot put a carting harness on any dog and expect it will instinctively and instantly know how to pull a cart. We teach that skill over a number of steps. And for that example, I've made a previous video about how that's done and I'll thumbnail that at the end. Equally, if we fit a water rescue harness on a dog, we cannot expect it to instantly know how to leap in the water and rescue a drowning swimmer or pull on a drift boat uh, to shore. We train the dog and it working on its instincts in that direction over a number of steps and I've also made videos on that. Likewise if we fit a harness to a dog to take it for a leash walk then we train the behaviour we expect that is to walk nicely on a loose leash heel or just sniff about. Again I've made a video on the three types of leash walking. So if we allow the dog to pull when it is in harness then we are teaching the dog to pull. The harness is not teaching them. Now Please know that there are a lot of YouTube videos analysing and advising on the best type of leash walking harnesses. Please watch these if you're trying to decide on which type to buy. Um, they're all well-meaning and most of them are well-made and helpful. My personal preference for a general dog walking harness is the style which has a chest pad and passes twin straps under the dog's chest between the front legs and then attaches up around the uh, chest to the top of the back. Or in, in the case of cart harnesses, they usually have two belly straps, a chest strap and a belly strap. So there's another pad usually at the top, uh, maybe with a handle and a leash connection ring. The alternate type just have a strap, has a strap along horizontally along the chest at the front and then a belly strap or vertical strap around the back to which the front strap attaches. I've seen dogs manage to pull out backwards out of this style, like getting out of a out of a loose jumper. So I don't actually prefer that type, but as with any equipment, proper fitting is absolutely critical for comfort and safety, so you decide. Please remember, whatever harness you choose, it will not teach your dog to behave in a certain way on leash. You will do that. So you need to teach that, have the dog learn to respond to your requirements through careful use of your body movements, reactions, voice commands and rewards. And maybe depending on the age, behaviour and learning stage of the dog, some appropriate level of correction with the voice direction if it forgets its manners. So to further illustrate and put this point in context, I'll demonstrate the five different harnesses I use with my Lancia Newfoundland dog and briefly explain the teachings I've delivered so that the dog now knows exactly what's required when I fit that particular harness and it's actually kind of, uh, kind of nice because when I put a particular harness on her she's keen to go either pull the cart or go in the water and rescue someone or whatever that harness has been trained for. So hopefully you get my point that the harness itself is a tool but does not in itself teach the dog anything. It simply facilitates the action you're training your dog to undertake. This leads on to the second question about training leash walking and the use of a harness. The most common reason I'm asked this question at puppy young dog training classes is that either the dog is young, usually four to six months, 
and quite untrained, exuberant, a little challenging to control, just wants to have fun and sniff around and run around the owner's legs. So the owner worries about pulling on the pup or the pup pulling on the leash and its enthusiasm for life and thereby hurting its neck or making it least shy. Reasonable concerns. Because of the pup's build is the second thing and stage of growth, it tends to be able to very easily back out of a collar and run loose quite commonly, which of course scares the owner. So think of a dog, say, um, like an Italian greyhound pup, where the fur is short and silky, the head is small, and the dog is generally gentle and shy, gets a fright, and it can just back out of a collar. So the challenge is not cured by tightening the collar, either because the owner is sensitive and doesn't wish to have the collar too tight, the same reason a slip lead will not necessarily be the answer, or very commonly, the dog's stage of growth means that its neck is of a similar circumference to its head and it's physically impossible to tighten a collar sufficiently to prevent the reverse pull and slip from occurring, unless you hurt your dog, which I definitely do not recommend. So, what solution do I provide these novice handlers with? Firstly, I allow them to retain the harness they have, but I ask them to add a flat collar appropriately fitted and use a lead splitter or simply two leads, one on the harness for security and peace of mind and one on the collar to acclimatise the pup over time to responding to a collar. For a mature dog in this situation, note a mature dog, I might suggest a Martin Gale style of collar in addition to the harness, again carefully size adjusted if the owner finds that acceptable, but I'd make that judgement in each particular case. Secondly, we work on both loose leash walking and healing in this equipment combination to teach the pup to understand the requirements of proper leash manners uh, and that they'll have a great time going for walks without the desire to circle the owner's legs on a pull as they understand the rules of listening and paying attention to the owner's pace and direction. Well, I just want to show you the different types of harnesses that my dog has been taught to use. Um, to start off with, these are just um, puppy harnesses when she was young and she could slip backwards out of the collar very easily. These are some varieties which I, I don't particularly favour because they're quite uh, narrow straps but you know, really there's nothing terribly wrong with them. Um, so the main ones that my dog uses is this tracking harness where this goes on the front of her chest the plate this goes down between her legs, wraps around under her tummy, and this sits nicely on the back, and I'll show you that. This one here is the carting harness. So this goes on the front, and in the carting videos that you may have seen that I've made, you'll see that I have reins that go through attachments on her collar down to the front so when I draw on the reins and encourage her with my voice to turn left or right, I use port and starboard, she does it and it pulls gently on her. Um, and this again goes down between her left, two belly straps, this is one of them, and uh, I've fitted so the shafts of the cart can go through. Over here I have one of my dog's very favourite harnesses which is the water rescue harness. Again, um, sits, sits on the front of her chest wraps down between her legs and comes up underneath and uh, it's got two loops on the side so if she's pulling a drowning swimmer or someone who's pretending to drown when I'm training her they've got those to hang on to rather than grabbing the hunk of the dog's fur which might be a bit of a deterrent when she's just learning. Uh, on the swimming theme this is really a harness but it's not totally dissimilar um, it's a, a life jacket so if, if I'm training in heavy surf where I'm doing quite a lot of training over a period of time and I don't want it to get exhausted. Nice looking harness here is a side wash harness with my dog's name on it and again the head goes through here um, you can see the attachment points for reins down there this sweeps under between her front legs and then around her belly and over the back and um, it's loose there's no shafts with the side wash and if you've had a look at the um, the videos I've made on that, you'll see that actually in use. Uh, the last harness that I use, which is my safety harness for inside the car, you can see this is the uh, chest plate, which goes on the front of the dog. There's a strap that goes between the legs, and then these two buckle around the tummy. This sits nicely up on the back. I use um, two attachment points, uh, one at the seat belt, 
that goes through and the other one which hooks uh, directly into the um, seat belt uh, female receptor there. So I've got two points of contact. There's an extremely solid, um, well stitched, heavy leather harness. I've got a 50 kilogram Newfoundland so this, this goes very well and I like having two attachment points uh, connected to two different parts uh, which are independent in the safety harness. Again, uh, I've added some, some thumbnails coming up in just a moment on detail on topics covered here which you might find helpful. Hey, thanks for watching, keep training, always relax when training and have fun with your dog.